But we are in the beautiful surroundings of the Deloitte Hotel and I have beautiful company on my right hand side. We have the front lead singer from Rose Royce, the gorgeous Gwen. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. I'm, I'm cool. over the moon to be sitting talking to you today. So, uh... Oh, you make me nervous, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. It's, I've been really looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, I mean, Rose Royce can... Uh, can we go right back to the very beginning? If I, I can remember. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you get involved with Rose Royce, uh, first of all? Um, well, I got discovered. I was living in Miami and I was singing with a local band. We used to travel around doing all the, the nightclubs and we once opened for James Brown, which was very yeah. exciting for us. Yeah. You know, there were three girls. We were like the Supremes, yeah. but we did all the top 40 um, songs and we had a band. And it just so happened that one night sitting in the audience was uh, Joe Harris from a group called The Undisputed Truth. They did a song called Smiling Faces, okay. if people don't remember. And uh, he said, I enjoyed your show. You know, we have a girl in our group. She's, she's finishing the tour. Tonight was our last show, so we came here to party. And I'm, I'm going to be auditioning, but after I saw you, yeah. I want to know if I can fly you to L.A. and audition you to be in my band. Exactly. And let my producer, Norman Whitfield, see you. And I was, and I was like, yeah. you know, I'm, this guy's crazy. I was just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, he said, can I have your number? So I gave him the number of the club where, because we were there, yeah. like we were, we would be there what four nights a week. So that next weekend, I had completely forgot about it, and the manager of the club came into our dressing room and he said, "Gwen, there's a phone call for you from L.A." I'm like, "Yeah, right," because he always used to try to get okay, me okay. in his office, right? Oh, so, right. so I'm like, "Yeah, okay, there's a phone call for me in yeah, your office." Right. He goes, "There's a man on the phone calling from L.A." Yeah. He said he's calling from Hollywood. I was like, "Well, take his number. Tell him I'll call him back." <laughs> <laughs> so one of the girls, Elaine, said, I'm going to go and see. And she said to him, if there's nobody on that phone, I'm going to box you. Because she was quite boisterous. So he said, there's somebody on the phone. So she came back and she goes, there's a man on the phone from L.A. So to make a long story short, I went out there. I was supposed to audition. I was there for like nearly two weeks. Yeah. You know, I was in Beverly Hills living in this fabulous mansion because he put me up at his house. His kids were there, you know, yeah. and uh, his niece. So I felt quite safe and yeah. comfortable. But after two weeks, I said, you know, I'm ready to go home. I want to go back to Miami. Yeah. You know, I'm ready to go. You yeah. said we were going to audition. So he said, well, I'm looking for the perfect place. And I have a band. Now, this band used to be uh, Edwin Starr's band, Rose yeah. Royce. Yeah. They were Edwin Starr's band. Okay. So he said, I have a band. I want you to get with them. They can play anything. They know everything. He said, put a show together with all the top 40 songs that are out now. Yeah. I'm going to find a venue and we're going to put on a little show. Some of my staff and people I know from the industry and we'll do a little show. So we did. And he was like, you're amazing. Yeah. You know, he said, I'm going to have to work on how you dress. But oh. <laughs> he said, you dress like a little country girl. <laughs> and I was like, how dare you? He yeah. goes, no, we work on how you dress and, you yeah. know, do a few tweaks here and yeah. there. And uh, he said, uh, you're going to be a star. And I'm like, yeah, right. When am I going home? <laughs> and so he looked at me and he said, the next time you go home, You'll have bodyguards. And I went, why do I need bodyguards? Yeah. He said, because you're going to be so famous that you will never, ever be able to walk down the street like you do now. And he was right. The next time I went back to Miami, I mean, people were chasing our, our bus. Yeah. They were running behind us screaming my name. Wow. Did, did, did you have a temporary stage name which included the word Rose? Or were you called Rose? Well, so, now there's really another not. story. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, when he put the band together and he put me, you know, with the guys, yeah. And he said, from now on, this group is going to be called Rolls Royce, yeah. the flower, R-O-S-E. So we were like, yeah, yeah okay, we're going to be called Rolls Royce. He yeah. said, you're going to be the classiest band yeah. in the industry. Yeah. There's no band out there with class, and this is going to be the band. He said, you're not going to be walking around looking like hoodlums, and you're not yeah. going to be walking around in little country clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he threw all my clothes away. <laughs> but, he, but we went shopping, and he bought all new clothes yeah. for daytime, for stage, everything, you know. Yeah. So he said, the name is going to be called Rose Royce. He said, and you, yeah. you're going to be called Rose. And I went, my mother's going to have a fit. My name, yeah. <laughs> she didn't name me Rose. He goes, you're going to be so rich and so famous yeah. that your mother's not going to care what you're called because you're going to have so much money. I went, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So uh, he had a partner who worked with him. His name was Walter Ainsworth. Okay. So I put Norman and Walter, Norwalt, oh, and I called nice. myself Rose Norwalt. And oh, wow. from that day on, I was known as Rose Norwalt, yeah. which after car wash, when all the focus came on me, yeah. that didn't go down so well with the band. No, <laughs> no. So yeah. they were not happy about that. But we made it through the good first, I said first two and a half years were fantastic. And after yeah. that, 
So it, was it the car wash really launched you into, yes. into global fame? Didn't it? Well, we had already recorded uh, In Full Bloom, the, the album we released, yeah. the second album we released, we had already gone in the studio and okay. recorded that. And Norman was about to uh, get uh, a release of the first single yeah. when he was called into a meeting to do the soundtrack for the film Car Wash. And they didn't want him to use anybody that, w that wasn't known. They wanted a big name. Yeah. And he said, the only way I would do this score yeah. for the film yeah. is you use my group. Yeah. Nobody's ever heard of them. They are the best. And they said no. So he said, well, you can take this job and shove it. Because if I do it, I'm doing it with them. Yeah. So anyway, he ended up winning. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. Wow. When we went to the premiere to see the film, yeah. you know, he had us all... You know, I was Diana Ross up, you know, yeah. and the guys were all spiff and shiny, you know, suited and booted. Yeah. And we sat down and the director gave a little speech and then he said, and now we're going to watch the film. Yeah. The place went dark. As soon as that music started, the entire place, yeah. with the exception of us, were on their feet dancing. Yeah. Everybody. Wow. Yeah. The director was furious yeah. because nobody was watching the film. No. They were dancing. Yeah, well, I can't even tell you anything about the film. I know the song is ingrained like <laughs> in my and memory. And Norman but... turned to me. He said, "I told you I was going to make you famous." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh God, here we yeah. go." Yeah, but eventually he got people to sit down, and they were just going wild about that song. Yeah. And from that moment on, yeah. it just exploded. Just in the whirlwind after that. Triple yeah. platinum around the wow. world, yeah. the single and the album. Yeah. So after that, when we released the second album, which we had already recorded, the yeah. one with "Wishing on a Star" and all yeah. those songs on it, yeah. it just went boof. Platinum yeah. straight away. Gosh. Mm. So, what, what was your next? Was Wishing on a Star your next major hit, or, or was it um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore? Wishing on a Star was the next major hit. Yeah. But Wishing on a Star was originally written for Barbara Streisand. Oh, okay. It wasn't written for us. The late Billy Ray Calvin, she wrote that song. Yeah. For whatever the story is behind that, I don't know. But she said that Barbara had decided that she wasn't going to put it on the album that she was recording at that time. Yeah. And Norman Whitfield being Norman Whitfield, he said, well, forget Barbara. Gwen can sing it better yeah. than Barbara. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> You're telling me that I can sing this song better than Barbara Streisand? Nobody can sing better than Barbara Streisand. He said, oh, don't worry. You're going to sing it better. Oh, <laughs> I was yeah, like, it's your song. So he goes, take this song. He gave me, at that time, it was a cassette. He said, take this home, yeah. learn the songs, and we're going to record it in two days. I said, well, I'm not going to be ready in two days. He said, oh, we're recording this song in two days. So I did. I went home and I studied the song and... I went to the studio the next day, a few takes, and, and there it was. Yeah. You've been all, all over the world doing, um, doing gigs ever since. What, what's the biggest um, concert that you've done? Uh, there was a festival, I think it was, it's called Budweiser, yeah. and they would have this big festival in the park every summer, okay. and there were like 150,000 people, and wow. to have them in the palm of your hands, yeah. you know, when you look back on it, you're like, wow, yeah. I had control of 150,000 people, you yeah. know, they said yeah. what I asked them to say, you know, they sung whatever I asked them to sing, and it was like, wow. You know, when you look back on something like that, that's quite an amazing feat. It must be an amazing feeling when, when you, you, everybody out there is singing your, 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 the words that, you know, exactly. you, that you made famous. Yes. Mm. It must be an incredible, incredible feeling. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for talking to us. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, indeed. Thank you.